Johan Cruyff is the Netherlands' most celebrated footballer. Undoubtedly one of the finest attacking players. Robin van Persie. Aryan Robin. But again, look at the pace here. Controls. Robin. Robin. High fives all around. We're sure you've heard of all of these great Dutch footballers, but lately, Netherlands is earning quite a reputation in the gentleman's game. That's right, folks. Today, we'll be taking a look at the cricketing journey of the Flying Dutchman so far. Did you know the history of cricket in Netherlands dates back to the 1780s, which means that it's much older than football. The Dutch were first introduced to cricket in 1780 by British soldiers during the Napoleonic Wars. By the 1860s, cricket was one of the most popular sports in the nation. On the other hand, football was only introduced in 1879. It didn't take long for the team to play its first match, as in 1881, the Netherlands national team faced Uxbridge Cricket Club 11. This was an embarrassing start as they lost by an inning despite getting to field 22 players. Soon after, in 1890, the Dutch Cricket Union was formed. In 1891, they had won their first national tournament and it was won by Haakske CC. In that year, they were also visited by an English touring team that included Sherlock Holmes author Sir Arthur Conan Doyle. In 1894, the gentlemen of Holland visited England to play MCC, making it their first Dutch side to play at the Lords. They lost miserably by an innings and won 69 runs. Throughout the 1890s, English touring teams visited and played in Netherlands. This led to the discovery of Kars Poshuma, an amazing bowler. Poshuma would go on to become the first Dutch player to play test cricket. In 1901, the gentlemen of Holland faced off against England again. They did much better in this five-match series, actually managing to draw two of their games. They obviously lost the rest against the super team. In 1905, the Netherlands national team had its first official international match against Belgium. It ended in a draw. Around this time, cricket became less popular because of the emergence of football and the Netherlands' poor relationship with the British as a result of the Boer War. The Dutch team played their first exhibition tournament in 1910 against Belgium, France, and the MCC. They lost against both France and MCC, but managed to win against the Belgians by 116 runs. In the 1930s, Dutch cricket improved greatly. Many call it the golden age of cricket in the country. As a result of the golden age was the formation of the first women's league in 1934. Unfortunately, the golden age ended abruptly due to the German invasion in 1940. Nazi Germany was famously against the sport of cricket. After the Second World War ended, cricket resumed in full swing in the country. In 1958, the cricket board got a royal charter and became the Konin Klika Nederlands cricket bond. Six years later, 1964, something magical happened. The team won against a test-playing nation for the very first time. They took down the mighty Australians by three wickets. The baggy greens could do nothing against Van der Feerhagen's amazing bowling. He took three wickets for 75 runs. P.I. Marcel was also impressed with the bat getting 77 runs. After this impressive display, the team earned ICC Associate membership in 1966. Unfortunately, they could not participate in the 1975 World Cup. They also missed the 1979 and 1982 editions due to poor performance in the ICC Trophy, now called qualifiers. In 1986, the team finally reached its potential as they got to the finals of the ICC Trophy. Steve Atkinson and Rupert Gomez were just phenomenal with the bat, and Ronnie Alferink and Paul John Baker formed a great bowling duo. They unfortunately lost the final against Zimbabwe by 25 runs, and hence failed to qualify. Three years later, they had another wonderful achievement as they defeated an England team featuring Alex Stewart and Nasser Hussain by three runs. 1990 was a special year for the Netherlands as they hosted the ICC Trophy for the first time, making them the first country to host it aside from England. Nolan Clark's batting and Roland Lefebvre's all-rounding led the team to the finals. Unfortunately, they were no match for Andy Fowler's Zimbabwe, who beat them by six wickets. This was also the time the team discovered Tim Delita, a great all-rounder who became one of the best Dutch players of all time. His son Bas would go on to follow in his footsteps and become a vital part of the modern team, but we'll get to that later. The 90s were a great time for the Dutch team. 
They got their first win against West Indies by five wickets in 1991, thanks to some amazing bowling from Andre Van Troost. They followed it up with a seven-wicket win against England in 1993, with RRAF Bradley and Peter Cantrell impressing with the bat. In 1994, they would batter a South African team by nine wickets. This wouldn't be their last upset against this team as well, but we're getting ahead of ourselves. After finishing third in the 1994 ICC Trophy due to Noah Clark working his magic again, the team would finally qualify for the World Cup in 1996. Sadly, their first World Cup campaign was a disaster with zero wins and nothing much to speak about. On a more positive note, they took part in the first ever European Cricket Championship the same year and finished runners-up. They would go on to win this tournament thrice in 1998, 2000, and 2022. The 1997 ICC Trophy was another horror show, as they finished 6th and missed out on the 1999 World Cup. Consistent performances in international tournaments in 2001 saw the Netherlands finally win the ICC Trophy, beating Namibia in the final in Toronto by two wickets. Thus, they qualified for the 2003 World Cup. Roland Lefebvre shown again. The 2003 World Cup was a poor campaign, as they failed to make it out of the group. However, they did get their first ever World Cup win against Namibia, thanks to two centuries, Fico Kloppenberg, best for young Fico Kloppenberg and Klaas Jan van Nurtwijk. He's missed the wicket and he's gone to his hundred. Can you believe it? Kloppenberg even took four wickets and got man of the match. The 2005 ICC Trophy only saw them finish fifth despite amazing batting from Baz Zuderen and outstanding bowling from Edgar Schifrelli and Ryan Tendosar. Bowling only fifth. Finishing fifth was just enough to qualify for the World Cup. They also earned ODI status and Ryan Tendosat, affectionately called Tendo, he would go on to be one of the greatest Dutch cricketers of all time with both the ball and the bat. He is Dutch cricket's answer to Johan Cruyff. They played their first ever ODI outside of the World Cup against Super Team Sri Lanka, who won the series as 2-0 visitors. 100 for Sanat Jayasuriya, a magnificent cricketer. In one match, Sri Lanka set the ODI record for most runs with 443 on the board. Before the World Cup, they took part in the World Cricket League and finished third out of sixth. The 2007 World Cup did not go too well. The team did register a victory against Scotland, beating them by eight wickets, thanks to excellent bowling from Billy Stelling. Honor is restored as far as the Dutch are concerned. That is a massive victory by eight wickets. However, it was not enough to get them out of the group. The Flying Dutchman may have missed out on the 2007 T20 World Cup, but they were not about to do the same for the 2009 edition of the Cup. This is just pure... The team reached the finals in the 2008 ICC World 2020 qualifier thanks to Tendo's amazing performances. The final ended up never happening and they shared the trophy with Ireland. The same year, Tendo would pick up his first ICC Men's Associate Cricketer of the Year award. They did really well in the T20 World Cup, defeating England by four wickets thanks to Tendo's fabulous bowling and Tom DeGroote's great batting. Stewart Broad stops it, doesn't get the direct hit, he's coming back for the second. Overthrow gives Netherlands a win. And what an upset in the very first game of the ICC World 2020. Beauties, Netherlands. You've played brilliant cricket here in this first game. They unfortunately failed to make it out of the group to a heavy 82-run loss against Pakistan. Oh. Well, that's it. It's all over. Umar Gol finishes off the innings. They finished fourth in the World Cup qualifier, earning a spot in the 2011 World Cup. Edgar Schifarelli took the most wickets in the tournament. In 2010, the Netherlands defeated a test-playing nation for the first time in its history. They won by six wickets against Bangladesh. Munasar Bakari was just unplayable on this day. Unfortunately, they did not qualify for the 2010 T20 World Cup. On a more positive note, Tendo would pick up the ICC Men's Associate Cricketer of the Year award this year, becoming the only person to ever win two, a record that still stands today. The 2011 World Cup could have gone better, the only bright spot yet again was Tendo, who scored two centuries and a half century. Good point, a rare thing, Ryan Tendiscotter. He broke records again, earning himself a third ICC Men's Associate Cricketer of the Year trophy and his second in a row. Association cricket may never see a better cricketer. One good thing that happened this year for the team was the whitewash against Kenya. However, 
Things turned sour again in 2012 when they didn't qualify for the 2012 T20 World Cup. The 2014 T20 World Cup was a much happier occasion though, as they not only qualified but topped their group to reach the Super 10. In the Super 10, they earned a historic win against England by 45 runs. Mudasar Bakari worked his magic again in this match. Up in the air. Oh, this should be a run out. Don't end like this. They are going to end like this. England have been double dutched. That was their only win, though, meaning they exited the tournament at this stage. Later that year, they earned T20 status. From 2015 to 2021, the team headed into the Dark Ages. They did not qualify for either of the two ODI qualifiers and did not make it out of the group in any T20 World Cup. The only positive from this era was the emergence of the aforementioned Bastelita. Delayda, that's pumpkin consecutive 50 in this series. He's the 2022 T20 World Cup was about to change it all for them, however. They started the tournament well by qualifying for the Super 12 by defeating Namibia and the UAE. In the Super 12, they actually managed to win two matches and finished eighth. One of those two matches was a historic victory against South Africa, where they beat the Proteus by 13 runs. Brandon Glover just had an excellent day at the office with the ball. Could be out, is out. But look at the reaction on the field there coming from all over the place. Max O'Dowd was the country's best batsman at this tournament, and Bastelita was the best bowler. Things only got better the next year as they would finish as runners-up in the 2023 World Cup qualifiers and get to play in the prestigious tournament in India. Bastoletta impressed again in this tournament. The captain, Scott Edwards, also made his mark. Taking Johan Cruyff and Renus Michaels' total football as an inspiration, Netherlands coach Ryan Cook used total cricket for the, whereas Bastoletta puts it, the team plays as one. Did it work? You tell us. The team won two matches, including another shock victory against South Africa. They seem to be kryptonite for the South Africans. In all fairness, Captain Scott Edwards was just unbelievably great on the day, with 78 runs to his name. Another big hit that. He led his team to a historic 38-run win. It's gloved it, and the catch has been taken. The other team they defeated was Bangladesh, who lost by a massive margin of 87 runs. Paul Van Meekeren had the match of his life here. Although they finished bottom of the group, they should be proud to know that they defeated two giant teams. Also, youngster Bastoletta followed his father in Tendo's footsteps and earned himself an ICC Men's Associate Cricketer of the Year award. Unlike most other struggling cricket sides, this team won't require much funding from ICC, as Netherlands is a first world country. The Dutch are seriously focusing on improving their facilities and domestic cricket. Along with that, they had a talented side with many youngsters, led by the fabulous Bastelita. It's a safe bet to say this side will only get better. Netherlands truly has a bright future in cricket.